Hello, welcome to the Intro 3 video on the Rhino Grasshopper Python component series. Today I'm going to go over libraries and why you might use one versus another and uh, which ones are available. We got Python libraries and Rhino libraries and Grasshopper libraries and so I'll, we'll cover a little bit of all of them. So when you first open a Python component, automatically filled in with the library we've been uh, using so far, which is the Rhino script syntax library. And we can just get rid of that and start from scratch. Now within Rhino, there's multiple layers of libraries we have access to. And I'm going to cover three primary ones uh, today. And at the core is Rhino Common, and that's basically Rhino itself. And those are commands that you have within Rhino. Uh, then you have the uh, Grasshopper Python component, and that gives you most of the power of all the components that are actually in Grasshopper. And then you have the Rhino Script Syntax component, and that gives you the power to run Rhino Script Syntax in a Python environment uh, in the Grasshopper editor or independent. Now, Rhino Common gives you much of the core functionality within Rhino while the ghpython lib gives you most of the functionality within the components of Grasshopper itself, and the Rhino Script syntax library gives you, of course, access to Rhino Script. Now, with each of these libraries, we can make a point. Let me uh, create some output variables, and let's use our Rhino common alias, and it has a point 3D we can use, given an x, y, and z value, and we have our gh alias, and we can access the components of Grasshopper, and we have a construct point, and it takes an xyz as well, and we'll give it a unique one. And lastly, we use our alias rs, and it has an add point and it takes a tuple with an X, Y, Z. Give it a unique one. And let's give these all access to their own variables. And there we go. Three unique points and three unique weights. Now we can see the contrast between Python and Rhino libraries by looking at something like random. And so so for the Python specific, and you'll notice it doesn't show up in the hints, but I already know that random is part of the Python 2.7 library. And again, I would do some discovery on the Python 2.7 library if you have any question on Python functionality. So this is just the Python random. I'm going to go ahead and just make a comment for where the Python libraries are and where the Rhino libraries are. Now, now using Python, we can create a random number just by directly using the random library. And I'm going to use out of all of this random integer. We need to give it a min and a max. And let's turn this out to run pi. And we'll give one more up there too. And as you can see, we have a random number between 1 and 10. Now using the Grasshopper library, we access through a component. So we use the gh alias, go through the components library, and use random. And random is going to take a range. a number for how many, and a seed. And if we give it a panel, see what we get. Wow, we get a whole list. 
So they've responded very differently so far. And now the most notable difference is the list and the single item. So to turn the Python code into a list, refer to the variable again and just update it. What we're going to do is use a Python <coughs> tool called the list comprehension. So basically call the same random, but now we're going to run it and iterate it. So range, we'll go ahead and match it with four. Range is another Python function that gives you a range of numbers from zero to or one to where they're the base of a index. So now to get a list using the Python code, we can use a, a tool called a list comprehension. And so this is a Python tool. And we're going to use the randint, use the same or same count. And now you can see that we're getting a whole list over here. And now if we test and update it, you'll notice that the Python list is actually updating every time we test it. Whereas the grasshopper created list is static. It executed once and it's in memory. Now if we create a random three number list and use that to create X, uh, Y, Z properties for these points, we should be able to create points on the fly using the three different types of libraries. So, created a new document highlighting the different uh, Rhino libraries as well as the Python library. Um, so up here is our imports. And as we go down, I've got a local variable set up to make it easier to work with with our input variable. If we come down to this make points function, we're passing a local variable library and point count. Um, so we create an empty points list and we iterate the uh, amount of times that we get passed as the point count and if the library that gets passed is pi for Python then we're going to get our random Python list and if it is GH for grasshopper we're going to get our random grasshopper list using the grasshopper component random. Now for either list, we're going to go ahead and grab an X, Y, and Z out of the index of that list. And then we're going to make three different points using three different Rhino libraries. We're using the Rhino common library with the point 3D function. We're using the grasshopper components library with the construct point function. And we're using the Rhino script syntax library with the add point function. Then we take those elements and we extend them to our points list and then return that list. Now I've commented out the output variables so we can see the effect of each library has on the code. So as we comment out Python points and we run our test we can see over here on the left that each time it runs our points get recreated. Now if we do the same thing commenting out the grasshopper points or uncommenting and commenting out the Python points we'll see that it gets run once so the component runs once and then the value is in the memory so there's a very different result from the use of two different libraries and the native Python gets called each time within the Python environment and so they're using the same libraries to create the points, but to create the random list of numbers used to make the points, they're different and they have a different effect. Now if we uncomment both function calls and show all of the results, 
you can see in the lower left hand corner the grasshopper points are static while the python points are moving and being created each call and we can see over here in our panel that there's three points created with the same coordinates we can even run a timer to get a better understanding of what's happening on the fly and so again lower left hand corner grasshopper call live points python well that's it for this video thank you for watching um, Next video, we'll be covering uh, more comparison between when to use Rhino components and when to rely on Python itself.